How about you? One of my favorite services of the week is uh, Sunday night. And let's everyone stand as we sing the theme song for this month. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll walk with him always. Page 422 this evening, anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for watching over us and bringing it back uh, this evening to this place where we can worship you. And Lord, once again, we pray that you would just challenge us, um, stir our hearts, Lord, and bring us back to you. And Lord, I pray that if someone here today does not know Christ as their personal Savior, that you would save them, that you would allow them to um, realize they're, in a, they're a sinner in need of a Savior, Lord. And I pray they come to that place of salvation in their life. And Lord, I pray for uh, perhaps probably many that are here tonight that are saved and a child of God, Lord, once again, that we'd be encouraged uh, by Psalm 23, Lord, how you are our shepherd and now we can walk with you that nowhere, no, no matter where we go, we know you're there to comfort, for, comfort us and we can lean on you and we can trust you, Lord. And thank you so much for this place, Lord, that you have used over the years, but we look forward to how you're going to use um, your word once again in this place to convict us and to challenge us. And Lord, I pray that you would just be lifted up and pleased and honored in everything we say and do in this service. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated at this time. At this time, the choir is going to come and minister to us in song. And they're going to sing this song entitled, I am trusting in the Lord. Show. 
sing your hymn this evening, if you would. Page 297, as we sing, God will take care of you. to see you out here tonight, Sunday night. The sun is shining. It's not raining. I think I could become a weather forecaster here in Ohio. It's going to rain in the next couple days. It's going to rain. My wife the other night was laying in bed and she looked at the phone. She goes, hey, it's not going to rain until 7 a.m. I said, what are we, we're doing it by the hour now instead of by the day? <laughs> Today she told me the storm's coming, Rob. But right now it looks kind of sunny out. I'm glad you're in God's house tonight. Let me give you a couple of announcements. Uh, and then we'll give you some prayer requests. Tonight. Good to see Brother Alan Porter in church with us tonight. I had to tease him a little bit. He's been a, a longtime pastor of a church up in Maine, and he hasn't been in church for almost two weeks now. And I said, man, you quit pastoring your church, you just quit church altogether. <laughs> but he's been in the hospital with blood clots in his lungs, and he's back. And uh, good to have you back in the service tonight. What, a, what a, a blessing he's been. I went to the hospital to try to be a blessing to him. He was to me. He's the one I talked about Wednesday night that he talked to a nurse and he got some information. Someone's going to check on uh, seeing about bringing her to church. And tonight he came in with another lady's name and said, hey, this lady, I talked to this one about coming into God's house. So Amen. praise the Lord for uh, Brother Porter and for uh, regaining his health. I'll give you a couple uh, announcements here. There's schoolwork that needs to be done, some painting and different things in the school. Tomorrow morning we're going to start at 9 a.m. If you have the capability coming in helping us with that, We'd love to have you come help us. We'll have some fun and get some work done, hopefully, as well. Uh, the, the little kids, the junior campers, are going to camp Tuesday, 8 a.m. sharp. Uh, Brother Eric asked me to announce this Tuesday, 8 a.m. They're leaving, arriving home 6 p.m. on Friday. Two reminders. One, registration needs to be turned in tonight. Two, the money for lunch. You need some money for lunch on the way there and back. And then Brother Eric is in the four- and five-year-old class tonight, so if you have some questions, you can see him by his office right after the service this evening. There is a um, meeting for the group going to Peru, and that's after church tonight. You can meet over in the uh, room two, uh, 207, I believe it is, over there, the men's prayer room. And then just a reminder again, uh, two weeks from today is Homecoming Sunday. No early service on Homecoming Sunday. We'll have a 10 o'clock meeting. 7th grade through adults will meet in here, then we'll have our 11 o'clock service, we'll have dinner on the grounds, and then we have about a 2 o'clock service with Brother Bill Fennell coming. A lot of special things we're planning for that day. Some of you, I know Brother Eric has been talking to about, uh, we're put, trying to put together a video and get some of our members that have been here for a long time to uh, share a little bit about that. So looking forward to that. Hope you'll mark your uh, calendar for that. Invite someone to come with you on Homecoming Sunday. We're going to preach a message that morning about the prodigal son. So uh, look forward to that. Let me give you a few prayer requests. Jim Wynn's brother, we mentioned this this morning, 
Russell Wynn, he's in the Cleveland Clinic, back in intensive care. He has blood clot on his lung and in his right leg. So remember Russell Wynn in prayer if you would. And then please, uh, Ann Cooper asked us to pray for RCT Kelsey Tittle. She and her platoon will be doing the crucible at Paris Island this week, and she asked that we pray for all of them as they finish their training to serve our country as U.S. Marines. So pray for Kelsey Tittle. Uh, Ann said she's a Christian and uh, try to take a stand for the Lord, so pray for her if you would. And then Jen Baker asked us to remember a little girl named Eden King, a two-year-old girl. Uh, they found a tumor, a brain tumor, Friday, and she has surgery tomorrow. Her daddy is uh, in Afghanistan, and he's... Uh, trying to get a flight home or he's on his way home maybe and so remember Eden King and her surgery tomorrow morning if you would let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for uh, bringing back, uh, Alan Porter back to us Lord thank you for uh, helping him to regain his strength Lord I pray for those that are in the hospital Lord a number of them in the hospital and in rehab and, and I pray for uh, Russell Wynn Lord I pray that you would uh, be with him be with Jim Lord as he stands by him I pray that you would be with this little Eden King, or the surgery would be a success, and they'd be able to take that out. It wouldn't be um, a continual problem. I pray for this young lady, Lord, who's in uh, the Marine boot camp, Lord, and going through a difficult week. I just pray that you'd give her and her group uh, strength. I pray that she'd be a great testimony for you, Lord, during that time. I ask you to bless our offering at this time as well, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. everyone stand once again this evening for our closing congregational number page 295 he leadeth me
appreciate it. Thank you so much. Just before Pastor comes this evening, we have Ladies Trio to come sing for us. He is here. Psalm 23, I like that, uh, those words in that verse that say, I am feasting on the manna from above. I said to Brother Humble not too long ago, we, we were getting ready for the church service to start, and I was standing over by him, I said, man, good crowd here tonight, and he says, well, you better be ready to feed them. I want you to know how much of a privilege it is to be able to speak and to look out and see a Sunday night crowd, a good number of people here tonight. Thank you for being here. I got a phone call from one of our members not too long ago just saying, boy, I like the way we're studying the Word of God. I got a, a letter this week from a, a lady in our church. Hey, I, I just want to appreciate the way we're studying the Word of God. And when we come tonight, we're feasting on the manna from above. What a privilege it is for me to be able to speak and to see such a great group here tonight. Thank you very much for coming. 
We're studying the 23rd Psalm. Before we start, let me mention a couple of things. We have a group that's gone up to Smite. Uh, the Nyer family went up there. They've already gone up. They left, uh, uh, I think, around the 3rd or 4th of July and are going to go up and help up there with the group up in Newington, Connecticut. And then Austin Rissler left this afternoon, right? And he's, uh, he's headed up there, I think, uh, this afternoon to try to help with that as well. So that group's going one way. Then we got the, the junior camp going Tuesday. The teens are headed out next week. I think they leave next Sunday for their teen camp. There's a Peru group that's going out, leaving Thursday and coming back on the 20th. And uh, it is a privilege to be able to go out and serve the Lord in different areas. So pray for the group going to Smite, all these different groups. And then I just want to say congratulations to Dave and Rose Maskey this Tuesday, July 9th. They're celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to Dave and Rose Maskey, 25 years. Psalm 23 the Bible says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the 23rd Psalm. Thank you for our opportunity, Lord, to study, to glean, to apply, to grow. Lord, thank you for the good number who's come out to hear from your word tonight. Lord, and I pray that you would speak to us through your word. We need you to meet with us, Lord, for this time to be of any value whatsoever. And we thank you, Lord, for your promise that you will. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We started two weeks ago this series titled, The Lord is My Shepherd. We talked about the Lord is my shepherd two Sunday nights ago. Last Sunday night, we looked at the words, I shall not want. When we started with the words, the Lord is my shepherd, we emphasized the word the. There is only one Lord. The Lord is. It's current. My. It's personal. He's our shepherd. He's our, our guide. He's our caretaker. He takes care of us. But it's possible that you could be in God's house and, you, and that doesn't apply to you at all. If you're not able to say, the Lord is my shepherd, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, He's not your shepherd. You're not one of His sheep. That's the bad news. The good news, He desires to be your shepherd. And if you haven't trusted Him as Savior, He wants you to do so. He wants you to become His shepherd. He wants to become your shepherd. He wants you to be able to claim Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Then in last week, we looked at the words, I shall not want. And we said it's easy for us to be disqualified from the beauty of this psalm when we live in the prison of want. We can even be Christians and not recognize what we have and always be wanting one more of this and one more of that. And we disqualify ourselves from the 23rd Psalm because we cannot say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But tonight we look at the words, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Have you ever seen video of a farm employee mistreating animals? You ever see those videos? PETA will try to do this where they'll try to maybe get some, some uh, new employee to go into a farm and they'll have some kind of a camera on him and he's trying to catch uh, somebody mistreating the animals. And sometimes they'll come out and they'll say that there was something mistreated. We all have our opinion about whether or not there was. Sometimes they'll come out and something really is mistreated. I mean, somebody was beating an animal and killed an animal, things like that. Those kind of things happen sometimes. But I will tell you this, when you see those kind of things, generally it's not the owner of the animal it might be some employee who just doesn't really care about the animals has a job and doesn't take care of the animals but the owner takes care of the animals jesus said it this way in john 10 and verse 11 he says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep 
But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf come and, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the Father knoweth me. Even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. When we consider these words, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, the first word that jumps out at me is the verb maketh. Now, as you study this 23rd Psalm and you look at the action verbs, you're going to look at these words, leadeth, restoreth, leadeth, comfort, preparest, anointest. Beautiful words. But the first one seems a little bit harsh. It says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. They learn something about animals. You can take a group of animals and you can put them in, say, a five-acre pasture field with lush grass. And they will go through that field and they will eat it down Say they would eat, depend on the number of them, of course, but say they would eat it down in one week. But if you took that pasture and you cut it up, maybe you split it into one acre lots, that may last them for two months. Because you know what they have a tendency to do? Graze a little, step on a little, graze a little, step on a little. They'll just work the whole thing over and they beat a lot of it up and ruin a lot of it before it's of any value. The Bible here says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I just want to give you three simple points tonight, and here they are. Number one is, he maketh me. Number two is, to lie down. Number three is, in green pastures. The first action verb is the word maketh, to put, to lay down, to purpose. Understand this, when the Lord is our shepherd, he is in charge. He is the active one. He selects the trails. He prepares the pasture. He makes sure everything is okay. But when I look at this uh, phrase here, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, is it possible that my shepherd would be required to make me do this? I mean, he had to make me do this? To lie down in green pastures? I ask you a question have you ever noticed how much extra time we have for sleep nowadays and how well rested we are have you noticed that some of you probably came to church tonight just to meet that need I know because some of you on a regular basis I won't call any names out There's a dear old lady that used to live near us. You might have heard me talk about her before. I love this lady. Her name was Maxine Leiter. She was precious. She was this little old lady, and she'd say, will you come clean my chicken coops? I'd say, yeah, I'll be over to clean your chicken coops. It started when I was about eighth, ninth grade, and I went through about twice a year. I'd clean her chicken coops. I started with a little um, manure spreader that, I, no lie, you could almost put it in the back of your pocket when you were done with it that she had, and then I got to where I took my dad's over, get a lot more in it. I'd work for Maxine, and, and uh, we'd work together a little bit. She, she had only been out of Richland County two times in her life, never out of the state of Ohio. I think she had been in Columbus once and somewhere else one other time. She never learned how to drive. It was a simple life. She milked cows by hand, about seven to 10 of them, twice a day. She was a precious old lady. But can you imagine first trying to explain to a little old lady like that what a car is? It's a car. It's got wheels, and it goes on its own, and it stops on it. I mean, can you imagine trying to explain that to someone like that? Here's how we are, though. We get a car. Now we have cars, and we increase the distance that we travel, don't we? Instead of going to work right around there, we go a distance to work. We increase the distance we travel. We get a cell phone. And now instead of making like three calls a day, we make like three a minute. Teens, they say the average teen texts 60 times a day, communicating, 
Now, let's be honest, some of you teens do it 60 times an hour. <laughs> when we just increase the number of times we communicate with others with our cell phones. The other day, my wife goes, hey, look at this. This is Instagram. I said, what is Instagram? And she goes, well, it's this where you like post pictures and stuff. And I said, oh, you mean it, it's like takes the place of Twitter? She goes, no, no, no. You get that with Twitter. And then you got Facebook, too. And Facebook, you're supposed to like people on there. I mean, if you don't like them in life, why do you like them in this book? But we just find things to take our time up. Don't I mean, just more and more stuff. There was a day where the ladies used to fix all the meals at home. And then we got restaurants. And you can actually, like, go somewhere else and they prepare the meal for you. And now they've got this thing where you can drive through and get your meal. I mean, just like in two minutes, you like talk to this box, and then you drive up and someone sticks the food you want out in your hand, and you eat it on the way home. And so you know what we do? We stop like eight times a day. We'll stop for a coffee. I like the French fries here and the burgers over here, and we have like a perpetual progressive dinner. Aren't we like that? We now have grocery stores next door. Used to go to the grocery store, you know, once in the winter and once in the summer. Now we go every day. Just run over the grocery store. We struggle to find rest, don't we? We just struggle to find rest. We just occupy our days. When the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the God, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate. What? Who has time for that? Meditating on the word of God? I'm too busy. I've got Twitter. I've got Instagram. I've got Facebook. I've got lots of people. I've got a text. I've got a lot going on to be able to meditate upon the word of God. I found that in 1910, Americans slept nine hours a day. Today, we sleep an average of seven, and we're proud of it. And one guy said it this way, says, we're tired because of it. Our minds are tired, our bodies are tired, but much more important, our souls are tired. We just wear ourselves out. Sometimes, honestly, isn't it hard even to come to church and to focus because we're just so scattered and what we got going on. There's another creature that has a little difficulty sleeping. And that creature is not a dog. We have a dog at our house. I think it'll sleep 20 hours a day if the opportunity arises. It's not bears, they hibernate. Guess what it is? Sheep. Sheep. They have difficulty resting they need everything to be just right no predators no tension in the flock no bugs in the air no hunger in the belly everything has to be just so for sheep he maketh me to lie down in green pastures consider this idea to lie down can you be imagine being required to lie down you know how moms are with their little babies and they, they take them and they like put them down for a nap and then they're just begging that baby to go to sleep. I mean, just begging that thing, just rest a little bit. What if somebody came to you and said, now you have to go lay down? You're like, yes, I've been looking for that. For kids, that's a little difficult. For adults, sometimes we just wish we had the time to lay down we run ourselves ragged and we wonder why rest is so elusive we have no time to lay down why because there's so much to be done there's bills there's too many bills too many obligations too many expectations and when we meet all of them if we ever do we create more we laugh about this sometimes in a church but sometimes it's sad it's almost as though we go to that big calendar in there and we look for a spot where there's a hole and we're going to fill it we're like that with our lives, aren't we, sometimes? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. Sometimes we're like this, too. In our lives, if there's not some explosion going on, we've got to create one. 
we create controversy. If there's not something going on, we look for something to pick at, someone to pick at. We want to start a fight. We just want something to be going on. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Take your Bible, if you will, and go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. In Exodus 20, we see the Ten Commandments. I want you to notice in verse 13 and verse 15, God took all of four words each to explain that we shouldn't kill and that we shouldn't steal. He took five words in verse 14 to explain that adultery is wrong. But I want you to read with me beginning in verse 8 when it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Need an illustration of what's meant there? For in six days... The Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Ninety-some words he used to tell us that we need some time to rest. We need to rest, to lie down. God rested, and creation did not crash. We can rest, and creation's not going to crash. Health requires rest. I served under a pastor last year that neglected sleep. And uh, when I was moving out there, there was something going on with him, and we didn't know what it was. It was kind of quiet about what was going on. But after I got a chance to talk to him, he gave me a book, and the book was titled Leading on Empty. Intriguing book. And it talked about how our bodies will just shut down if we go without rest long enough. And he told, he said, I, I said, I'll be honest, he said, I thought I was so important. There were a couple of times where I didn't sleep at all. I just go right through the night working all the way through and just keep right on going. And he got to a point where his body just totally shut down. It wasn't producing something that he needed. His blood pressure skyrocketed and he had to lie down in the hospital for a while. And I've read before, I remember reading an article one time about a lady who took her china dishes and she put them in the clothes dryer and turned it on. And she said she was so sleep deficient that she didn't know what she was doing and she smashed all of her china because she needed rest. Turn over to Psalm 4 if you would. Psalm 4, the Bible says this. Psalm 4 and verse 4 says, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Psalm 46. Psalm 46 and verse 10 says this, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Is it possible that we would jam pack our weeks with this responsibility and this obligation? And if there's nothing on that day, we've got to get something in there because we've got to be going and we're going and going and going. And the psalmist says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Be still. Be still. Take some time where you can meditate. Take some time where you can just recognize God and who he is and why he's such a great shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Will you consider this idea? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
One commentator said it this way. He says, green pastures were not the natural terrain of Judea, but were the work of a shepherd. We can lie down in the finished work of our shepherd. Lie down, rest, relax, recognize what God has done for you. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. One commentator said it this way, satisfied their wants being completely supplied. Does that describe you? Or right now you're thinking, oh, I get out of church here in about 15 more minutes. I got to do this. We got to get this done tonight. We got to go here. We... Their wants being completely supplied. Listen to what Albert Barnes said. He said, the exact point of contemplation in the mind of the poet, I apprehend. All right, what he's basically saying is what I think he's thinking. The exact point of contemplation in the mind of the poet, I apprehend, is that of a flock in young and luxuriant grass, surrounded by abundance and having satisfied their wants lying down amidst this luxuriance with calm contentment. Can I read that again and you see if that describes you in your life? A flock in young and luxuriant grass, surrounded by abundance and having satisfied their wants, lying down amidst this luxuriance with calm contentment. I venture to say that if we were to be honest, not too many of us would say, that's my life. That's exactly how I feel. I'm just lying down. All my wants are supplied. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I read the word selah a minute ago, and I want you to consider the word selah throughout the Psalms. 71 times, if I counted correctly, there's a psalm that ends with the word selah, or, or there's a, a phrase in a psalm that ends with the word selah. I want you to see this. Look if, initially at uh, Psalm 60. In Psalm 60 and verse 4, we read this. Psalm 60 and verse 4 says, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. You know what selah means? Cease. Pause. Muzzle. Be quiet for a minute and ponder this thought. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Look over in Psalm 61 and verse 4. David says this in Psalm 61, 4, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Pause for a minute. Consider that. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Muzzle it and think about that. Meditate upon that for a minute. Look over in Psalm 62. In Psalm 62 in verse 8, the Bible says this, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Pause, muzzle it, stop for a minute, consider those truths. Psalm 68 and verse 19, I love this one. Psalm 68 and verse 19 says it this way. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Claim that verse on a daily basis. 
get up on a day where things aren't going quite so well and say, I just want to quote Psalm 68 and verse 19. I want to muzzle it, and I want to pause and contemplate. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. I'll give you one more. Psalm 85 and verse 2. Psalm 85 and verse 2. This is all you really need when it says this. Psalm 85, 2, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. That's really all we need, isn't it? If you're a child of God, if you know your home is in heaven, that's all we need right there. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Let's just stop for a minute and contemplate that. He maketh thee to lie down in green pastures. One commentator said it this way. He said, lying in the midst of abundance. Lying in the midst of abundance. I've been told this, that if you go to a cattle herd, and if they're in a pasture, you can look to see if they're getting what they need. If by 10 a.m., they are already lying down chewing their cud, that's good. If you see them up after 10 a.m., that means they're not getting everything they need. They would like to be all done for the day with their eating. They go, they lie down before 10 a.m., before the heat of the day, and they just sit there in the shade and chew their cud. If you see that, good thing. If not, probably not getting everything that they need. Let me ask you a question when someone looks at your life. Do they see you relaxing in the shade, chewing your cud, just meditating, just relaxing, completely satisfied? Or do when others look at our lives, do we see this frantic pace and going all over the place, always needing one more thing, always having one more responsibility? Is it possible that he's going to have to knock us down, that he's going to have to make us stop, be still, and know that he is God? Or wouldn't it be better if we would just kneel down voluntarily? The picture that's given, I believe, in this passage here is where the shepherd has prepared the way. He's taken the sheep. They've gotten to the pasture and he's got them all content, and he's right there, and they're all looking at the shepherd, resting, just looking at the shepherd. Wouldn't it be beautiful if that was said of Mansfield Baptist Temple and the members here, just relaxing, just resting, knowing God's in control, knowing he's got it all under control, and we're just lying down in green pastures. How do you do that? How do you do that? Let me take you to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. You might be able to quote this verse. The Bible says this in Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. The picture being given is the sheep, and they're all lying there, and they've got their eyes on the Savior, on the shepherd. And here's what's said in Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know where we need to start? Before he leads us, before he restores, before he anoints, before he comforts, before he does all those things, we need to allow him to make us lie down in green pastures and recognize what he's done for us. You know what I think is a beautiful picture of this? is a guy named Daniel. Daniel was a guy who was told, if you pray one more time, 
you're in big trouble. And the Bible tells us, I think it's Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, that he went, he opened his windows, and he prayed as he did aforetime. I pray. That's what I do. And if you guys don't like it, okay, I'm good. He prayed as he did aforetime. And they came, and they grabbed him, and they took him, and they brought him before the king, and they said, this guy's not obeying. And he says, well, then I guess we got to throw him in there, into the lion's den. And they threw him into the lion's den. And the king didn't sleep all night. It was a horrible night for the king because he liked Daniel. And he came back, and he says, oh, Daniel. He says, oh, king, live forever. You know what he was doing there? Right in the midst of the lions. Just lying down in green pastures. Just enjoying the provision of the Lord. What a picture that that can be for us. You say, well, you don't know what my life's like. I don't know what it's like, but I guarantee you this. You haven't lied down with any lions lately, have you? Oh, we have difficulties. Yeah, we do. But how about just stop and be still and knowing that he's God and recognizing what he's done for us and just resting in that. Keep our mind on him. Forget about all the busyness of this life and just relax in those green pastures that he provides by daily loading us with benefits. Can I ask you this question in closing? Does that describe you? Or do you say, I have to be honest with you, man, I'm just frantic pace. I'm just going, well, I don't even have time to stop, to meditate, be still. Are you kidding me? Maybe it's time we just kneeled and said, God, help me to find the time to just lie down in the green pastures that you're providing. I'd rather kneel down than to be knocked down. Let's stand for prayer.